welcome to Osh After the Bell podcast, where we bring you a fun and informative conversation about everything outside school hours care and give a voice to our fellow educators. So buckle up. Welcome everyone to Osh After the Bell podcast. I'm joined with my co-host Bobby from Firefly HR. Welcome Bobby and we have a guest, uh, exciting guest again today, Perry Campbell. Um, good morning, Perry. Hey. Uh, uh, joining us from, uh, yeah, joining us from Sydney. Perry, as we all know, he's a deputy national educational leader at a CEQA. Oh, wow. What does the CEQA stand for? If you don't know, you should know by now. <laughs> it's Australian <laughs> Children's Education and Care Quality Authority. Actually, I have his LinkedIn profile in front of me, so I could read it out. <laughs> <laughs> we we all, we all get confused at times. So, Perry, uh, thank you very much for giving your time. Uh, this is the second time you're here, and we really value your input. Um, the last one we did, I learned a lot from it, and I'm sure that the audience uh, also got a lot from it. And we couldn't... Uh, Wait to have you back from the very first time we had it. We were planning when we will have you again. And uh, mm. today is our lucky day. I know. And look, as much as you get stuff out of it as well, so do I, because it kind of just having those that chance to kind of hear from you guys as well in the work that you're doing kind of, yeah, feeds into the stuff that we're doing. And when I'm talking to our teams about some of the things that we're thinking about, like having different perspectives is always great and, um, that kind of thing so yeah I get just as much out of it so it was yeah happy to come Thank back you. and have another chat and isn't it nice to know that uh, we, this is a triangulation this is not a, 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 an authority working on its own it's uh, it's always looking for collaboration and 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 that's how CEQA has always occurred to me uh, always approachable uh, I remember meeting a few team members last year in Brisbane uh, pre-COVID and uh, yeah, it never feels like it's them or us. It feels like whatever is happening, we can always get feedback. We can always provide feedback and then uh, and go it that way. And this is, this is a platform, one of those many pl- platforms people can utilize. So, um, and again, I would like to thank Bavi for thanks for organizing. Bavi is on fire <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> she, she's really good. I just email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, That's right. so, thank you, Bavi, uh, for, for organizing this as well. I'm happy so. to. I also think Perry's last podcast episodes are most downloaded out of all of them. Mm. Yeah. Well. Okay. So, Yes. That's probably That's just because I flogged it to all my old out of school <laughs> hair buddies. <laughs> Maybe like I was also downloading, giving it to my neighbors and said, just <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> um, just hey, jump uh, into the Apple store and just download it on every iPad that's on display. Wow. <laughs> like pre install, pre install mm, podcast. That's a good idea. <laughs> pre install. <laughs> and uh, hopefully after that, they can say what a sequence sends for. Um, uh, <laughs> Harry, you know, uh, before this, uh, click the button recording, we got off, uh, we got on this topic of um, leadership and how um, roles and sometimes the way they see new developments at a sequel, which we'll get to very soon, uh, the way they see or perceive the new developments can uh, occur as an overwhelming situation. But then we I really like what Bobby said, like, you know, uh, really going back to what we really focus on. Uh, the reason I mentioned that word leadership is because this week is our leadership week, it looks like, because uh, we just also recorded yeah. a podcast with Hamza Khan, a uh, leadership uh, author himself from Canada. And now we have you, Perry, and uh, what a, what an amazing week for Bobby and I. Like, I'm taking mm-hmm. notes, and uh, yeah. I'm sure Bobby's Come always there. So uh, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, how important leadership is and for us and, and, and how important it is to recognize us as leaders and, uh, and, and uh, see that as, yes, it is challenging and overwhelming or may occur as overwhelming, but it's a very crucial position we find ourselves in. Hmm. Yeah, kind of, it's, um, yeah, it's that kind of role where there's so much opportunity and people get boxed into leadership thinking it's just all instruction and telling people what to do and all that kind of stuff and Mm. that's more about seniority and role whereas leadership is just something different and I'm always a big believer that a great leader inspires who they're working with and that's what makes it really kind of great leadership and you kind of in any role where you are 
in that leadership role, you kind of, a success indicator is you do yourself out of the job mm. <laughs> because you're creating for future leaders and those people that kind of um, think about it. And, yeah, look, leadership is challenging and um, everybody kind of plays to their strengths and has particular things and it's hard when you're working with others to not fall into what naturally you do and it's like that's not always beneficial but what you do is what gives you those opportunities to be leaders mm. um yeah so it is it's like such a complex space and mm. um just the way people approach it is what inspires me to look at how leadership is just so individual and the way that um yeah the way that people engage and with the people that they're leading in that role kind of thing and yeah even just i think to the managers that are in my teams and stuff that each one of them is different, but they achieve quality in what they're doing, but in different ways. And I think that's, mm. that's the thing that kind of inspires me with the National Quality Framework is that it never once tells people how to deliver quality. Yeah. What it challenges yeah. them to do is to find what quality in the context of their service is, is. and deliver on that and be open to it changing and developing and advancing over time and stuff. And yeah. Uh, as I'm taking notes, I was smiling. Oh, because, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I wrote something uh, very, um, and, and um, I, I hadn't made that distinction in, in my uh, perception of leadership. I wrote leadership versus seniority, as you mentioned, and how um, we have leaders, uh, from generation Y, we had to Google that a couple yeah. of nights ago as to what generation do we belong to. <laughs> Not that it matters, but it actually did and on that night. So like leadership Y, uh, uh, leading leadership uh, X, uh, and then leadership X, leading uh, leadership uh, generation Y, Z, uh, it's not always that if you're senior, you came bef before us that mm. you are by default leader. Uh, it's an attitude. Uh, oh, maybe it out of several attributes, uh, one of them could be the attitude uh, an individual holds or the value an individual holds. And so, as you said, it's so individualistic in, in, in that uh, unique. Mm. So what's new in a uh, uh Perry? Um, for us, a lot of it, like everybody, the last 12, 14 months kind of thing has been very much focused on what's been happening um, COVID-wise, and we've spent a lot of time working with governments and um, the sector and peak organisations and things like that, and that's probably a whole podcast nearly in itself kind of thing, but mm -hmm. just working with that reactive nature of what's happening and that kind of thing, and um, there's that general sense of um, starting to think about what we've learned because so much you can go through that and come out the end and just look to go back to what you've done before but there's so much opportunity in there around reflecting on what's happened and how you use that to change how you do approach things differently moving forward and because we're not out of COVID times yet and that's kind of you just see the nature of flare-ups and things happening and stuff so I think we've still kind of got a bit of a way to learn and that kind of stuff but um, generally for us some of the stuff that we've um, focusing on supporting governments in the sector on at the moment is a couple of the reviews on, underway. Yeah. Um, the NQF um, review, what's happening in that space, that consultation's just, um, those submissions have just closed. Um, we've got the workforce strategy stuff that we're supporting governments um, in um, the development of the new workforce strategy for their consideration um, later in the year. The, we've just recently um, announced that um, governments have made the decision on the consortium that will be working on the update of the approved learning frameworks. Mm -hmm. um, so that work will be ramping up as well. So some great um, opportunities for reflection on what's happening and thinking about those kind of things, but also for the sector as a whole to get involved. And um, it's... Now's the opportunity that people have got really strong thoughts and um, ideas around how to influence change. Um, now's the time to do it, not when the change is happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, yeah I even though, um, yeah, you talk to people around, oh, this regulation doesn't work or whatever, and not um, in my current role but previous roles, and you kind of go, 
did you provide feedback on it when it was when it was in development yes and, and that yes. kind of stuff like and yeah the way people contribute now is stuff that in a couple of years time we'll look back and go wow did like I influenced that yeah um in whatever way and not every idea everybody has sticks and um yeah that's that's life that's all our lives each and every yeah. day in our professional thing but having environments and I kind of it is a bit like working in a service or working in an office where if you have a voice um just the fact you have a voice is great and I think when we're talking about reviews of whether it's regulations frameworks workforce the fact that we've got a voice and that educators all have a voice in that speaks to the system itself and mm. the opportunities that do it kind of thing and we've got the national quality standard that values voice and just the fact that people can contribute to it um, I think yeah. is a really positive thing and yeah hopefully people do take that opportunity yeah and it doesn't take long so I did the NQF review survey I think 30 40 minutes max mm. and like you said how much change that can have and at least you've had your say um and then even when they announced the framework update, I'm like, oh, I love my time out place. Like, what are they going to change? Yeah. And then I'm like, hang on, it's 10 years yeah. old. Well, look, and yes. the important Things. thing is it's like it's not starting from scratch again, and yes. that's the great thing of it. Most people do love it, and it's served us well for 10 years, like yeah. more than 10 years now. Um, so it's, But it is that chance to have a look and go, um, yeah, does is there any opportunity to refresh it and think about it a bit differently and just yeah. tweak it and stuff like that? So it's not kind of throwing it out and starting from scratch it's kind of going what works and yeah exactly like you Barbie like it's generally people go it works and they're really used to it now and things like that so yeah and 10 years ago if you had said to people in 10 years you wouldn't want to change it they'd be going oh no no yeah <laughs> guess, well yeah even now I reflected like I'm like oh I like it but I'm like hang on kids are different from 10 years ago to yeah. now so it's important that we do do it. Like, like I just like, got, even just <laughs> thinking <laughs> about some of that stuff around um, the how we engage with information technology, mm -hmm. how we look at that now in the framework is very different than what ten years ago when it was being developed, kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's like um, when the new um, Spider-Man movie came out. <laughs> I was I, I'm talking about the one not with the uh, no, see again. When it came out in 2015 or 16, I could be wrong, or 14, I was like, um, I missed the previous Spider-Man. That was good. But then I realized that that was 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's, an, it's a decade. So the people who were born then, um, or, 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 or let's say perhaps mm -hmm. the people who were 10 years old, they, they couldn't have even watched the movie. It was like M15 plus or something. Mm -hmm. And for them, this is, this is the Spider-Man. And and every Batman movie uh, comes keeps coming in and you keep killing his parents every time in every movie. And you feel like, haven't we already seen this? Uh, and like, yes, I've seen it, but the new generation has not seen it. Yeah. So for the people who are coming in, uh, sorry, I went back to movies, I miss mo watching movies in the theaters, <laughs> but um, for the generation which is coming in now, it's, 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 an, it's their framework. It's theirs to run with. Yeah. You know? uh, we, we, we provided the foundation perhaps in 2010, 11. And, yeah. and, it, and hey, we, like I think we we've got to remember that each day starting in the sector are new people who that framework is brand new to them. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, yes. We also yeah. have more people that would have also been in Ush now mm. than when 10 years ago. Like yeah. it wasn't as common for those back in school, yeah. whereas a lot of educators now probably went themselves as a child. And, that's, so and that, I was actually reflecting on that the other day, probably with somebody talking about, because, um, yeah, t later towards the year, SIC has been around for 10 years. Um, <laughs> I'd started really early in 2012, so um, have worked here nearly the whole time that it, it's been around. And, yeah, it made me think, oh, those when we first started with the National Quality Framework as a whole, some of those children that were like 10, 11, 12 in outside school hours care are now 21, 22, 23, working, whether it's in the sector or wherever they're working or studying at university, who uh, started with that foundation of the National yeah. Quality Framework. And I think that's exciting to think about. We're now getting to a generation of a workforce who were brought up in education and care on the National Quality Standard. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And you kind of think that being brought up in a space where they feel like they've got a voice, they can make a difference, and that 
the context of what's happening for them, their family and community is valuable and important. And we know all the things we see happening around us in society and the not so pleasant part of human nature, kind of we hope that the children that we've got in care now will be changing that for tomorrow and stuff like that. And the things we did 10 years ago are making a difference now and they make a difference along the way. So the stuff and having these conversations now and I think that's one of the key things for leadership is you never fully see the influence you have, but you've got to have trust in what you're saying and what you're doing to know that even if you can't see the change, know that there is a change kind of thing and kind of, yeah. And I think that's part of what makes great leaders is they don't necessarily have to see everything that is a result of their leadership. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very, um, it, 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 it's in in the future. You may not even know who you have influenced, mm. as you said that you know, uh, children who were in our care ten years ago, in, under the influence of my time, our place, they they didn't know what was going on. But perhaps uh, an understanding of my time, our place would have shifted p- people's paradigms on interactions. We don't know how those interactions impacted their own self worth and self concept and. We don't even know those kids' names anymore, yeah. but uh, we don't know. We're, maybe we will might end up working for one of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we, ne- we never know. Maybe that person comes in our lives and starts, uh, uh, you know, um, leading us. So yesterday yeah. I was at a service and this lady used to um, wo- uh, be my university student. So I said, hey, I remember you from university. Uh, and she's in the last year now. And then she said, oh not just the university I was actually also at the school like oh my goodness now I feel really old and then she said and I was really hoping that she would say oh no just in the year six final year I saw you no she said I saw you in year one I'm like oh no (laughs) so I I I was uh, when she was studying uh, as a in a primary school then when she was at a university I was there and now she's working at the service and I'm consulting and I'm like you just can't get rid of me (laughs) so so it's it's the longitudinal um, uh, impact I have had on her and I'm really conscious of what you just mentioned those words I said those uh, 10 years ago uh, the Although, as I said earlier, that we may not know the ch- children who uh, might uh, we might have influence positively, hopefully, at all times. They are there in the universe somewhere. Some of them will see us. Uh, mm. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful that I didn't say anything bad to her <laughs> 10 years ago, because then she would say, I remember you because you said this, yeah. this, this, and this to me. <laughs> so I have to... Oops, sorry. sorry. No, 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 <laughs> no, so one thing I've noticed in the conversation too, we're talking about leadership, but we're also all talking about children. I think all of us have hardly talked about staff and I think we forget that how you lead, like we think of it as leading the team and the staff, but it impacts on the children, mm. how we lead the service and how we are as a leader and even how approachable we are. And um, I wrote down some words too, like what I like to see in leadership, like empathy, diversity, innovation, like and I guess all that leads into how you're perceived by the children. Like if you're kind, caring, considerate, that goes under empathy. Um, innovation, if you come up with new ideas, that keeps the children engaged as well. Um, as, yeah, so I just noticed that as we are talking too. Like no, 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 that, I don't think any of us mentioned stuff, which I think yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and it is, I often think, and there's probably a whole PhD in it or something somewhere along the line, but... <laughs> If you went into particularly outside school hours care, what do children children know of that educational leader role? Could they describe mm. what that role does in their service and who it is and what they do kind of thing? They might be able to talk about the impact of it, but do they know who the educational leader is and what role they do and what they facilitate in their service and how do they kind of shape the work of the educational leader? And mm. it's always that thing of, yeah, are we doing things for children, to children or with children? Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. part of that kind of inspirational leadership for me is always when I see um, services doing things with children with families with community with staff and things like that and um, like I always do feel really privileged when we're looking at like the excellent rating yeah because we get to see that high kind of inspirational end of where children are at the center of decisions that services make day in and day out and um, 
it is that stuff. And I think you talked to maybe even on your last um, podcast or something, it's about those things that are free. Yeah. Attitude, commitment, mm. those kind of things. Um, I think even that last one, I think, um, so you mentioned about philosophy and all those kind of things that are free but driving factors in quality and mm. great places for children to spend time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, again, I, I learned when, um, when um, Perry was saying that no matter what we look at, and even when we look at the new <clears throat> framework, uh, for us, it's a new framework, but for those who may start, might have started yesterday, my time our place was a brand new framework for them. And I, th that got me thinking into a different sort of conversation in terms of leadership. And as I was listening to your interaction, as I was writing it down, who is a leader? Uh, uh, isn't everybody is a leader? Like, mm. don't we all lead? Like when we ask children, stand in two lines, follow me. You're leading. In that mm. moment, you're the leader. <laughs> or maybe you're standing behind them and letting them walk. And uh, our kids are all, if you ask children who's a leader, everybody wants to be a leader. Uh, and then something happens to become adults. And then we think, oh, leaders, uh, by the way, they are in that room. Or mm. she does this. And I'm just, I'm just going to come and work and leave, hopefully. Uh, but uh, it's not, I, I, I believe leadership, again, is an attitude. So, and, and to, if you look at it, from from a, as a fly on the wall perhaps everybody who's working that day is a leader uh, in his or her role and yes we are talking specifically about educational leadership here but maybe you can lead and create the space for the educational leader to lead you know um, so we all are leaders and it's uh, sometimes you know when we read the, read the title of the book leadership or perhaps uh, uh, leadership on a podcast people think oh it's not for me it's for my bosses and mm. yeah so that they can lead me. And I'm like, oh, maybe if you knew some attributes or characteristics of a leader, you perhaps might rediscover that you yourself are a leader and you are leading your leader to lead you well. So it's like, it's not, it's not out there somewhere for someone else to get. It's, it's for us. Uh, and, therefore, uh, and how I got to that, I was thinking, if I look at the word leadership now, and as if I've never heard it before, perhaps, and it's a brand new word, let's say, I've never heard it before. And I, today I look at it. And then I say, okay, if I write down these uh, characteristics, which you mentioned, empathy, innovation, and something else uh, you mentioned, Barbie? Diversity. Empathy, diversity, right? And then I say, okay, if, if I knew those words, then I can start becoming a leader. It, it's, it's not that, it's, it's not impossible. Uh, but perhaps it's, it sounds like a us and them kind of thing at, at school. Like, a, you, know, um, you know, these are the leaders and I'm not. I think it's important as a leader to try and not make it an us and them too. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like you, you mentioned something when you visited the uh, service I was at that it was kind of hard to tell who was the leader in a nice yeah. way because I think as yeah. you walked in, it wasn't just I had to go up to you and approach you. I found yeah. a lot of my team went up straight away to you and be like, hey, yeah. how are you? And ask you questions. Um, and you mentioned it was hard to tell who's the leader in the service. I think mm. that's important to remember when you are a leader <laughs> too. And uh, when Perry was mentioning about how... Uh, this new thing which is coming up, the, the great thing about that is the channel, the, the, the channel of feedback, how people have provided feedback and stuff. Uh, Perry, um, for uh, like when, when we receive uh, input, uh, when we receive input or feedback from people, let's say, on any a new thing which we might be developing, Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. No, that's I just fine. Want to make sure that, yeah. So when when we look at um, um, any uh, leaders, right, um, or providing that feedback or input into new developments, let's say, but have you heard more from these leaders? Like I'm, I'm conceptualizing that as educational leader and coordinators or directors, or have you also heard uh, or ASICO has also received input from people who are permanent part-time, so perhaps even casuals, like, uh, do we, do they also take part in these things? Um, that one's probably a bit early to tell yet because it only closed, I think, the other day. Um, it, it, yeah, the end of April. <laughs> yeah, so it's only just like freshly closed kind of thing. Yeah. But whenever I do get that chance, like I always talk to all staff around kind of being part of that and um, because it's, 
It's about just not leaving it to others to do. And um, it's like anything, if you've just got leaders talking about leaders, then you're not getting that perspective of educators talking about leaders and what they look like and things mm, like yeah. that and how to shape yeah. the role and that kind yeah. of stuff. And I think, like I just think for myself, thinking back, the way I approach leadership now is a culmination of 30 plus years working in the sector and I can still go back to my time working with services and children and educators where even 30 years later I can think of stuff that somebody said to me or just an action of somebody who wasn't my leader but influences how I lead and that kind of stuff and when I'm thinking about leadership I kind of and again I was just reflecting on it knowing that we would touch on it today I kind of think and yeah just for me like I think it's a that kind of thing around relation and relationship and leader and leadership they're very different things and Mm. having a relation and a relationship are different being a leader and leadership are different as well Um, and yeah that's like that that was just me reflecting on it kind of thing and trying to find something to kind of tie it into and they're very much tied together but they're very different things and that role of leadership can come from anybody yeah and yes. yeah and anybody at any time depending on who they are will show leadership yeah and, yeah. and in fact they are showing leadership perhaps we are not what we are not observing them or reflecting them yeah. you said that someone said something even 30 years ago and you would remember and one of the things which i remember from you perry was uh, what would future sort of think of this? Or yeah. you're always preparing, like even if you're having a bad time at a service, uh, okay, that's fine. I'm going to be a leader one day and I'm not going to do this to my staff members. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's always the narrative you have yeah. is, 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 is it, it determines your next step, right? So, yeah. uh, so, And I was even thinking, Sarah, when you said, oh, you might not remember the name. And yeah, when I think back, there's probably lots of names I've forgotten on the way. But yeah. there were some names that popped into my head straight away yes. that of children that would be in their early 40s now that I've worked with. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, but I know their name and who they are kind of thing. And I remember right. because they had such an impact on who I am yeah. um, now and who I was as an educator throughout the years kind of thing and in different roles I've been afforded yeah. along the way. So um, it's those that kind of still draw me. I can yeah. think of educators that I haven't, like, wouldn't even know where they are 20 years later. But right. there's a piece of them that kind of still influences what I do today and how I approach things and think about mm-hmm. things and stuff. And then I'll see somebody who is a 18-year-old educator who just says something and just inspires me in a fresh new way kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty impressed with some of the educators I yeah. get to speak to and just like the future leaders. Like I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it <laughs> and seeing what they come and what they do. And, and you're right, uh, Perry, as to begin with, when we, uh, when we dis- uh, uh, were discussing about um, our interactions and, and how Bobby and I, uh, I feel that Bobby and I are very lucky uh, to, to actually have interactions with people on the floor at all times. Like that's where, so when Bobby says that uh, she's really inspired by some of the leaders, she, she's hiring them. <laughs> so <laughs> she, she gets to talk to them. <laughs> she gets yeah. to nourish them, nurture them. <clears throat> give them feedback. I get to work with them. And I'm, uh, I think I, I, I had a um, meeting yes, last night. And as I was coming back, there's this lady who said, oh, where do you get this energy from? Because I was like hopping the stairs and it was like 10, quarter past 10. And I said, uh, people often ask me this, where, where am I getting this energy from? And I'm not even, I, my diet is really bad. But I, I think I have a theory on this. And uh, look, it, um, maybe there's a future PhD in this theory. That if you really love your work, like yeah. if you really love your work, the eight hours, the seven hours where you spend, um, I think when people say tired, they're not always talking about physical tiredness, mm-hmm. I think. They're like uh, cognitively tired, emotionally drained perhaps. And and uh, again, we work in challenging situations. People don't call me because they're having a great time. They call me because some things they would like me to have a view on. Uh, and and so it, it can be if I see it that way. And uh, I think that uh, I want to thank everyone that I get to interact with because they keep giving me that energy. Uh, and perhaps my next answer would be if somebody asks, where do I get your en- my energy from? I'll say yeah, from you because yeah. you are such a good person. And I think that's really one of the things. And we all 
we all have to live, we all have to earn an income and stuff like that. But part of that kind of stuff is around that exact thing, that inspiration, that feeding off the work that you do. Oh, we've lost Barbie. Um, that feeding off the work that you do is really that's kind of that extra bonus you get in yeah. whatever, like in the roles that we get yes. to do, is yeah. it's not all about that pay packet that we all need to live on and work on and we all need incomes and to survive and stuff like that. But so much of the work that we do is um, also kind of supplements the salaries that we're on and yeah. the those educators that I talk even before and after school care that you talk to them in the afternoon and they were there before school and they decided to stay the whole day, not because they were expected to or not because they were forced to, but because they wanted to. And yeah. they wanted to put that effort in and they get great pleasure out of being able to spend a few hours during the day yeah. at the service yeah. doing kind of things that they want to mm. do. And that's yeah. not to say that any educator should be expected to do that, but mm. some people do it because they want to. Yeah. And because I, that's how they kind of are and that kind of thing. So, yeah, mm. it's, it's that stuff around it's more than just a pay packet working in education and care, I think. Well, and I've seen educators that will drop quite significantly in their pay packet to find a place where they have that joy. They want to, like what you talked about, Sarah, have that like bounce of energy still yeah. every day. And it's like when work isn't work to them, it's like a passion yeah. and a love still. Yeah. And for the first time in this podcast, we have our dog. My dog. <laughs> <laughs> he, he really wanted to get my attention. Oh. So I'll just hold him if that's okay. Yeah. And for those who are on Spotify, get on YouTube, please. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to see this, oh. hey, hey, good boy. So, um, <laughs> what was happening in that is, um, we, I use the word how you narrate what's happening. Um, Perry said, uh, wanting to be there, like long hours and still there, and. Uh, Bobby mentioned something about creating the space where they can want to be there. Like, you know, like uh, maybe taking a pay reduction or something. And, and that, that, uh, that, that makes me think that in the beginning of this podcast, we, we mentioned a few things which, which a CEQA is doing. Uh, I wrote a few things down, but again, uh, couldn't write as fast. And one of, was, was, one of them was a review of NQF, Workforce, a workforce strategy and then learning framework or something mm. the government is doing something. So if I am, uh, 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 let's say a coordinator or a permanent part-time worker, how, what should I be really excited about? What is actually something which is going to come in a, in, in, in a manner which might impact their day-to-day -day work uh, straight away? I know uh, some things will be still under reviews and all, but um, what is going to come and then they might have to do some uh, sessions around to have a, a proper understanding of that. Uh, I would, I excited about? particularly for your audience, I think they are well placed to contribute to that, looking at my time, our place, mm -hmm. and the areas where there could be opportunity to refine it or think about it a bit differently and that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. that's the discussions if they're the things that, whether it's the educational leader, coordinator, services are talking about like thinking now because the question's going to be asked so it's better to have thought about it and given it some real thought and discussion now knowing that that is going to come at some stage um, in the coming months and stuff looking for that and um, yeah we're waiting to hear how the consortium will approach that kind of engagement but there will be engagement so yeah, yeah. What, a website's coming may so yeah. by the time this is out and then everyone will be oh, yeah, yeah, course, having yeah. a look and yeah. I like that idea of thinking now, like yeah, have those because we at all. Yeah, it, educators know what works in the frameworks for them and what doesn't already. Mm. So it's, it's even an, yeah. oh sorry, it's even an mm. opportunity to work with the children, um, like even the older children. But you'll probably find kindergarten will still understand and like sharing with them these are outcomes or principles, practices. What would you like to be, see different? Could be even word choices now are a bit different to ten years ago, um, yeah. and that's an, a good way to collaborate with them. Uh, uh, on communication and leadership, I felt that um, sometimes when I say the word communication, I also use the word leadership around it, and it's not they are not far from each other for me. And one, if we were to dissect communication to understand it better, 
um, <clears throat> one would say that the availability or the provision of, of having a space to have your voice is important. And Perry, you touched on it. You said that people have a voice. Uh, and I think that um, more and more, perhaps this internet and let's say podcasts or, or, or the availability of them just going on Facebook and writing something up because we see so, so many pages and paragraphs after paragraph people are now taking advantage of giving the feedback on. So I think uh, in, us, uh, in, in this uh, sector of education, do you feel, Perry, that we are coming closer and closer? Although some may still believe that, oh, nobody listens to me at my service, nobody listens to me, oh, I don't even know my area manager's name and all that kind of thing, as if people may say that. But uh, as, a, as a team, do you see that? Do you reckon that uh, from your 30 years of experience that now this, this is the time when maybe because of COVID also that we are coming closer? Uh, as, as, as in communication? Um, yeah, I think it's a hard one to answer because individually I think there's a lot of, like, I can go into a service and really get a lot of talking with educators and hearing what they've got to say and, um, yeah, but I'm also not blind to the fact that depending on what role I've gone into a service in historically will depend how I engage with that service and what level of that kind of thing. In my role now, if I'm going into an excellent service to talk about why they're excellent and have a look at the environment and stuff, staff are very engaging and tell me all about it and that kind of stuff. But if I was going in in a previous role where I was going in in a more kind of authorised role to kind of conduct an investigation, that changes that power relationship yeah. as well and things like that. So I think it does, it does have to be contextual about who you are trying to capture that voice. Yeah. But I think, as you said, with social media and the way that things are approached now, everybody's got a voice. Sometimes you use it for good or evil. Yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, people feel like in one way or another they've got a voice and I think sometimes people just have to work out how to best use their voice hmm. um, and that kind of thing. And I think being able to kind of contribute to the refinement of their learn approved learning frameworks is a great constructive way to do that yeah. and um, really yeah, be strong, whether that's as an individual, as a collective, as a service, as an organisation, that kind of thing to determine how that best does. But, yeah, I feel that the longer we get into particularly the national quality framework, um, people are getting stronger and stronger at having their voice, but also uh -huh. thinking about the best way to make sure that that voice is heard. Right. And right. I really love that people also think about when they're, how they can be good representations for children's voice. Mm. And yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, um, but that's, that's so, such a good thing that giving that space for, so I'm one of those um, people who would say verbally uh, and might even get into an argument to prove that I'm okay with changes. I love changes. I like changes. I've been reflecting recently um, that actually uh, I'm one of those who, or maybe I'm just getting older. I don't know. Uh, so uh, uh, that I don't like changes. Like uh, I just, uh, so I had this again, um, uh, I was with my friends and talking about this change and the phenomenon of change and how uh, one may see that. And uh, and he, this, this particular gentleman was really good at, um, but, perhaps phrasing what I said, but he said, uh, what if it's not a change? What if it's just enhancing your life? And then, and when I see the word enhancement, I, I am inspired by that. So, uh, whereas when I say change, some I feel like somebody's telling me what I'm doing is wrong. And I'm yeah. like, why do I need to change it? What, what, what's the change? Take it or leave it kind of thing. <laughs> but when someone says, hey, let's enhance something. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, so when I see my time up place, I see it's been enhanced. Uh, so if somebody would like just sat down yesterday, um, um, uh, uh, going through the my time up place and making himself or herself familiar, uh, enhancing, uh, enhancement of that is uh, always welcome, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those it, who don't like change. Yeah, It so much reminds me of just a conversation I had yesterday um, with a few people around 
um, the term critical reflection. I know it's a bit of a side party, yeah, critical yeah, reflection, yeah. but that word critical is often um, scary because when you think about it, when we hear the word critical, often it's not a good thing. It never yeah. comes with good connotation. So when we're thinking about critical reflection and stuff like that, and mm. there was, and it made me think of one of our, again, had the chance to see how things were done in one of our excellent rated outside school hours care services, where the educational leader there um, takes time, not every day, but takes time to at least every couple of months work alongside each educator and just kind of be an on-the-spot mentor as the day goes and just kind of go, oh, maybe try this or think about that and that. So it's not a threatening way of coming mm. back and going, you did this, this and this or try this, this and this. It was conversational as it happened. Mm. And you can't, the way that educators responded to it was beautiful because that's how it worked. And yeah. that role of educational, that educational leader was supporting them in their program delivery. Yeah. And but it wasn't in a threatening way. It was mm. in a collaborative, mentor kind of respectful way. Mm. And um, I think educators just have so much to offer each other. Yeah. But sometimes we're really bad at taking critical yeah. feedback on ourselves that we struggle mm -hmm. to give it to other people as well. Yeah. And and this and I'd seen this operationalized in the way that it was in that there was nothing in there that was kind of being horrible or negative it was all around just and the person just flourishing and having somebody there to kind of just offer them some tips and stuff like yeah. that and I think that again ties it back to that great leadership and it's just those kind of aha moments that you have and go wow that's just it looks so effortless and I know mm. typically it's not always just because it looks effortless yes. it is and it's a result of lots of trialling and seeing how things work and thought and just that deep mm. kind of thinking to it. But the benefits to that educator, that group of educators, and just their whole approach is one great outcomes for children, but it's one of those things that you look at and go, wow, that's why you are an excellent rated service because just yeah. that of being able to approach that, yeah, um, right. yeah exactly. is just, mm -hmm. yeah. It would be and, interesting. Oh, sorry, yeah. Sarah. Go on, go on, go on. Say with that service to know where they started too. Like, did that educational leader do it differently? Was it more of a sit down yeah. and then they've critically reflected on it and thought, hang on, this isn't working? And that whole process to get to where they are now. And I'm yeah. sure they're going to still reflect on what they're doing now and make changes. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure if I went back like now, 18 months later, um, that it could look different again because mm. it, it's kind of evolved and um, mm. things like that. Yeah. And that's, that's that great thing. Again, I think the national quality standard it doesn't say you have to do this, this, and this. It's about yeah. being able to apply those principles of what is quality. There's never an end goal to quality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I love about the excellent rating thing is one of the things they've got to tell us is how over the next three years they're going to improve on where they are. Yeah. And so we we never want to put an end point at when quality is done because yeah. it's never done. And yes. each time you have a group of new children or, yeah, each year you get a new cohort of kindergarten start kind of or prep or whatever you yeah. call them in the states and each of the states and territories, that that can change one, only not how the service works, but how who those children are, who their families are, which school or schools they're coming from. All of that can change the dynamic really quickly. So you've got to be able to kind of match that and think about how that can change um, over time, the culture of the service kind of thing. So yeah um it's yeah one one of the things which i always hear as a request from while running leadership shows it's about empowering leaders to have and i'm doing this on purpose um confront confronting conversations mm -hmm. and uh, uh what if they are just conversations <laughs> Uh, who gets to hold the truth in a conversation that this is a confrontational or necessary? Who gets to say that? Is it the person who is listening and is confronted? Or is it the person who said it the way she or he said it? Um, working on both parties, perhaps, like the one who is receiving it, if he or she takes it as, oh, thank you very much, well, then there was no confrontation. Right? Perhaps well, before you are approaching that individual and you think, oh my God, I'm going to tell him or her something what he or she should have done instead of what he or she did. Uh, perhaps the, the 
confrontation lies here <laughs> and, it, and it's not even there yet maybe you'll maybe the uh, staff will surprise you by receiving your feedback such in a such a great way and you're like whoa that was easy <laughs> and so it's like a it's a trial and error <laughs> like try it see how it went and then try it again and, and that itself is critical reflection yeah and it's that thing where if you can because that's not every service is like that and it's not always kind of that easy and it's mm. it, you kind of see it but if you can find that spot where the ability to be able to support and provide feedback to each other is crucial to how you operate as a staffing team yeah. mm-hmm. then when you have somebody new in to that team it's easy for them to kind of absorb how the team works already right. and straight away you're saying to them this is a safe space if you've got feedback for somebody they want to hear it yeah um, if you mm-hmm. and if they've got feedback to you they'll tell you um, it's not a, we don't have to hide that kind of thing. And yeah, I, I love it if somebody wants to say to me, hey, like that didn't work for me the way you handled that situation. Because then I can go, all right, well, look, part of it we can't change, but the bits that I can, can change or control and stuff like that, that I'm really happy to look at that kind of thing yeah. because I never want my leadership style to be one size fits all because yeah. that's never going to work. I need to kind of, yeah, do that. So it's just, it's and, finding and that even, spot and not every yeah. not every um, educator is suited to every team that they work yeah. in and mm-hmm. not every leader is suited to lead the team that they've got and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, it's and not easy even, to always think about that. But, yeah. Yeah, even when we think that uh, there is nothing to hide or don't, uh, uh, you don't have to keep things hidden, they're not hidden. They, they, they come up eventually anyways in some other manner. <laughs> they come, they show up uh, as a stress. They show up as uh, gossips. They, they, mm. they, they turn up in some really nasty manner. Like, that's absenteeism. Exactly what you want. Yeah, yeah. So you, you look absenteeism, absolutely. Mm. Um, uh, you, you're looking at what you avoid is persisting. Like you're resisting it, but it persists. So perhaps some, some sort of, like these conversations about how one can even provide space and uh, and then just, because critical reflection, how my time map list suggested was just having more than one perception. And and and, and so th- uh, when I say something to you, I'm not saying what you, who you are is wrong. I'm just giving a perception mm. which you may or may not have. And then uh, I think critical reflection is a uh, critical conversation might be looked upon as criticism. Because mm. I and I found often when I did that too, especially if you've got that uh, comfortable enough relationship with educators that it, sometimes if I said something because I thought they might be doing something we might not be allowed to do, not because of us, maybe because of the school slang, and then the educator would actually give me feedback. Oh no, we're doing A, B, C, and D, or I actually have already checked with principal, teachers, whatever we're doing, and then it's really good to be able to have that feedback because me on the outside, if I didn't say anything, I would have just been perceiving them as they're doing something wrong or not something I'd kind of suggest we could do in our environment, but actually going and having that conversation, you learn their why behind what they're doing. Um, And and I think that helps solve a lot of that build-up that you might get later or you might take to approach. Like if you see a couple of things of them that you're kind of questioning and then go approach them about A, B, C and D, it's like, well, if you had those conversations along the way, um, especially if it was something they shouldn't have been doing, you could have stopped it earlier. But then mm-hmm. if it's something great, because I actually had pretty innovative educators that would actually go above and beyond. So I would actually find out all these great and wonderful things they were doing and they'd already put all these things in place um, to make it possible. Yeah. Um, and you just don't know if you don't have those conversations. I think communication and that's just, is huge. Yeah, I think probably that kind of is the stuff that when you get the chance, like we all do in one way or another, to visit services and engage and stuff like that. You can walk into services and kind of go, oh, it's not the most state-of-the-art place that they're kind of cobbling <laughs> everything together. <I'm-> <laughs> but, yeah, no, but you watch and you watch the team and you watch how they mm-hmm. work and how they work with the children and engage with their community and and you just kind of go, wow, this, like, the building is not your service. Yeah. Yeah. Part and of your service uh, is who you are as a yeah. staff team, as an educator team, as a community of children, families, and mm-hmm. the, like yeah. um, staff and how it all works together. And yet we've got to have particularly that stuff around physical environment and health and safety. And we've got, regardless of what the building looks like, we've got to make sure of that. But 
the heart of quality is around who's in that building and the building plays a part, but it's not, it doesn't contribute. And yeah. I think that sometimes people get that confused that you need all of that to be the like a quality the service, thing, yeah. but mm-hmm. that kind of that heart of yeah. it is and early. I ran from a, I think our building was 120 years old, the old one on the school grounds kind of dilapidating its way um and even before our assessment and rating we were struggling financially I think the six to 12 months beforehand it did not affect our rating at all though we didn't have like you said those bells and whistles no devices anything computers or anything like that didn't matter it's just what we were doing with what we had in our service and the um it was pretty proud because the assessors could see on the day um and I guess this, that's hard too when you might compare. We might see some lovely centres online and we kind of got to watch that we don't compare. We've got to remember what we've got might be suited to our community or the spaces we've got pack up, pack down services and it's yeah. what, we, what we do with that. And, and, and one of the things I wrote in the previous um, podcast and it's coming up again for me uh, when we have talked so much about leadership and how you see your environment also is a part of how you lead that. And um, what I wrote was, what are, what are some things which are okay for leaders? Given that I consider everybody's a leader, um, it's okay to be, to have doubts. It's okay to have that self-worth issues, you know. I think it's okay to, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, for me, the first thing that pops to my mind with that question is, it's okay not to get it all done at once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that to, like, you don't have to change everything overnight. <laughs> that there is, like, we build to things. And yeah. thinking about what can I change today that will make a difference tomorrow, next week, next term, next year, that kind of thing, that it's got to start somewhere and you yeah. don't have to change it all at once because, um that's overwhelming, but exactly. it's like, what can I do today that makes a difference for tomorrow? tomorrow. Thank you, Perry. I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna say that to myself uh, every uh, <laughs> because because I get overwhelmed with so many things I uh, need or want to do, and uh, and all and I really cannot do all of them anyways. So just let's have a look at what can be done today. Once it's done, mm. it's done, and it will impact the tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, so and that's uh, like I will um, tie it in because I know we had wanted to talk about it um, and the addendum stuff we did mm-hmm. for the educational leader resource, and again, completely different pathway, but it does kind of yeah. that started out as just an initial discussion around we had this we did the educational leader resource, and we kind of went we really wrote it so that um, it would address educational leaders in all services, all service types, all service contexts. And then at the end of it, we kind of went, it is a great resource, but there's opportunities there to support educated educational leaders in those unique service types like family daycare and outside school hours care. So that started as a discussion. And Mm. over that process, we kind of went, oh, it might just be a couple of pages and things like that. And then um, in thinking about it and it kind of just built on from there and um, speaking to Kylie on behalf of Nosha and Kikan and stuff like that and we kind of went into that going, you tell us what you think needs to go in it from your members, from your educators, for educational leadership, how can we kind of um, mm. support them better through practical stuff? Um, and then so over time that evolved, if we had, a, we could have, sat somebody down and said in a week, just write us an addendum. We can publish it up. It's a couple of pages and stuff. But it started as a thought and we kind of evolved it over time. And it changed lots as we went yeah. through kind of thing. And then now I look at it and it's not, it's very much when we did family daycare, it kind of was a complete thing. But for outside school hours care, it needed to be just a whole series of almost like information things around a whole different range of stuff. Right. And it changes it up greatly, but it's that's what outside school hours care told us they want to know about as in that educational leader role and stuff. And so we've got one section that's talking about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspectives, but then we've got another bit that's talking about what does educational leadership look like in this context or how do an educational leader support critical reflection or reflective practice and what do they look like kind of thing and when you're working with diverse educators and stuff like that. So 
that's a kind of, it's a, different than what we were talking about, but it's that starting out yeah. as one thing and not wanting to get it all done straight away, but right. letting it kind of work through because it gives you that time to kind of process and go, yep, yeah, working, not working, let's change this, let's think about it a bit differently. Mm. And I think at the end, we got a great resource out of it that um, is for educational leaders and it's not a front-to-back read of anything. It's, yeah. uh, oh, we need to, need to think about this. So, oh, we want to do some action research. Here's a good place to start and mm. that kind of thing. So I think that kind of getting that thinking to going, you don't have to have all the answers straight away and think about uh, it and let it kind of yeah work on its way. Uh, uh, it's a Friday morning. So, of course, my brain is not that clever today. But I just thought of, as you were saying something, it, uh, there's a distinction, two words distinction I saw, uh, uh, thought of. And it, it's like commitment and attachment. So the commitment to support services uh, was there, which gave you the flexibility, but you weren't attached for it to look in a certain manner. Mm-hmm. So it didn't, it's not backward to four. It's, 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 it, mm-hmm. it's not like this is the outcome to achieve. So therefore, the rigid process would be to achieve that outcome. In fact, the outcomes change, but the commitment didn't. The commitment ended up. So what we are, what we ended up now is this beautiful resource, which people will be able to have access to and all. Um, but uh, that was because of the commitment. It wasn't because we were attached for it to be two pages, five pages, or no, no, we can't go out because it doesn't satisfy the agenda we have. No, there was no, there is an agenda, but it was more to do with. We want to support people and how it looked like we were flexible towards it. Mm. So uh, as so to, to all those people who are working on the floor right now, you want to support the kids and community and families, right? The community kids and yourself and, and, and the support stuff. How it looks like may not be, uh, we shouldn't be attached to that. Uh, we The commitment will manifest itself not necessarily today <laughs> yeah but i wrote in big uh, caps lock time because you mentioned time a few times uh perry even in the last one you mentioned that the future sorrow would like this so and I, I now see that all the small conversations we have with our staff members and all the small work we do that education leader did and eventually it will eventuate so, uh, but but we need to be consistent yeah. <laughs> with all friends. And look, that's that's what I love around thinking about that evolution of the addendum for um, Osh is that I know the approach that Kylie um, had um, is not only just asking people what you want in there. She said, "Well, you write it. Mm. Like, don't tell me what you want in there. You write what you want in there." And mm. so that's why we had that contribution of people working in services and having their expertise around particular things. And we find people that have, do have expertise in particular topics. So each of those ones that are in there is because of educators that have a real commitment to those kind of topics and were able to write about it from their experience of working in services directly and stuff like that. So, um, mm. yeah, it's always it's always exciting to see what, people come up with in when given that opportunity and yeah. often it's when that's when you kind of hit that sweet spot where people go wow that's a great resource well it's a great resource because you're a great resource yeah and like people will always go oh what's a really good resource and what kind of okay you are your greatest resource you've just got to let yourself kind of think of it like that that you are your own resource so you are a leader we should say to people, you are your own great resource. (laughs) And it's okay not to finish that resource book today. You can take the time. So I'm just writing things down to actually as a big takeaway. It's like I have a a page full of things I'm writing and I just now can't understand my own spelling uh, and and handwritings. So, um, but I just, as, 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 because we had this great conversation again, Perry, thank you very much for that. But people who are listening, they, they, they can take it easy uh, because if they know that they're committed to it and it just doesn't get done in one day. So while we don't want to be critical to others because, oh, what if I hurt their feelings? You know, why are we so critical about ourselves then? Like, why do we hurt our own feelings if we don't achieve something in that day? 
Uh, we we give that grace to other people, the people we love in our lives. We give that grace. Okay, you didn't couldn't done it yesterday. Let's try to do it today. I think that's the narrative you should have for yourself. Oh, I couldn't do it yesterday. Okay, let's try again today. And and that's that's so crucial. And therefore, I wrote. And it's time. I think one of the great qualities of people in those leadership roles is being able to kind of filter out when that can happen and when it can't, because we know there's things that have got to happen, and you've got to do this and you've got to do that, and mm. That's that's where that kind of leader rather than leadership comes into it. That I need to make sure you're doing this. That you know that this and this and this has happened, and we're covering our backs. But it's that stuff that goes with it that makes great quality and great outcomes for children. Is kind of massaging that into something that works for everybody, and knowing who your educators are and when what they're bringing to that role and that kind of thing and how that all kind of works in with the children that you're working with and that balance of and you know sometimes that people just won't work well together Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that's okay sometimes like you don't they don't have to be lifelong friends but they've got obligations and things like that but it's about going all right I know that if we've got a particular project that I want two staff to work on, I'm not going to put these two together because they're just never going to work together. They work alongside each other and they've got mutual respect for who they are in their roles, but to get the most out of what I want them to do, they're not the best fit to do that kind of thing. But if I put this person and this person together, um, I think yeah, our minds are going to be blown with what they can come up with. Great. And, and, uh, and that's what I wrote again. It's okay. If they don't love you, <laughs> you, yeah. are, you are a leader, you are a resource, you don't have to finish it in one day and they don't have to love you. <laughs> so it's, it's okay, because, but you still have that uh, uh, matter of integrity that you have something to fulfill because you were hired for X, Y, Z reasons. You fulfill those reasons and I now see a little bit of detachment from uh, building your own resilience that, hey, you know, hiccups will come either through humans uh, that they don't love you or the task itself may need, like just like our resource will may need back and forth. Uh, and I think that for me, the good services, whether they're excellent rated services or just other general services, I kind of walk away and it's those services that know who they are, mm. who their community is, who their children and families are and who their staff are, that you walk away going, they know what they do and they know why they do it. Mm -hmm. And they are great things for any service to be able to do because we can all go in and do what needs to be done in a day, but do we know why we do it, how we do it, and how that kind of, how that's important to our um, families and communities and stuff like that? Yeah. Well, even the resource, although it's aimed at educational leaders, I actually advise other educators to read it. Well, I have been, um, because even just how you cover, like, there's a lot of questions in there to get you thinking because it might sound a bit solid what you've just read, especially for probably new sure. educators. But then there's heaps of reflective questions and then examples in practice to help that solid information be like, oh, okay, this is how it could look and, oh, this is how it looks in another service. We could perhaps do something similar or opposite or it's just yeah. an idea of and how that's, it works. That's the great thing. We of, I often hear people will go, oh, we've got, two services and they run the same policies and they have the same philosophy and all that kind of stuff and one gets a good response at an assessment rating and one not so much, it's because copy and paste doesn't work Mm. in education and care and what works in one service doesn't work in another service because this service has thought about why, the relevance of it, what it means and all that stuff and just doing great stuff, yep, it offers great care and they do things that are exciting and fun but they don't know why they do it or what the importance of it kind of thing. And, again, that excellent rating stuff, we always really careful never to say do this in your service and you'll be an excellent rated service. Right, yeah. Because people can take those kind of things and go, oh, we did it and it didn't work for us. Well, no, because it's not relevant to you and your service. But for that excellent rating, like we've got services out there that are changing communities and the ways communities engage within their communities, how children, how communities view children in as kind of citizens and services out there going, don't talk about children being tomorrow citizens. They're citizens yeah. today. Today, yeah. <laughs> They're not tomorrow's citizens. They're today's yes. citizens yes. and see them as a valuable part of our community and stuff. And that's the kind of thing that when you get the chance 
to think about, particularly those excellent rated services, that they are out there not only just doing great things within their services, but changing the way communities. And to think that any service has that opportunity to make a difference to the lives of the children they care for, but to communities and stuff like that's yeah. a huge kind of opportunity and privilege, I think, as well. I have one question, maybe um, one final question I have from, for, for you, Perry, like uh, your opinion on this. You mentioned something earlier that uh, a service, um, excellent service or services who, who are confident knowing where they are, when, why they are doing something. Um, could it also be for those services which have, you know, new team, uh, they just started up and they have um, chosen a bite-sized um, target to achieve, but now they have uh, an assessment rating coming up. They go through it, whatever that is, they take that as a feedback, right? And they are still confident who we are and why we are doing it. And, and as I keep coming back to the same thing you mentioned, time and flexibility and commitment, that this, this conversation is also good for those who say, okay, but we are not excellent. No, that's okay, but that's who you are. And we are looking for clarity and sincerity in why you do what you do. So yeah. it's, it may not give you the results straight away that, mm. oh, now I know what I'm doing. For the last month, I know what I've been doing. Okay, but again, time. There's a continuity of it. Maybe the next a &R, you'll get the exceeding and excellent and all that kind of thing. But uh, would you agree with that, uh, Perry? Or? Yeah, for sure. And it's... It's, it's particularly an area that we've been thinking about how to use the outcomes of assessment rating and kind of how services really kind of unpack that for what that means for them and how it's going to drive where they go over the next couple of years and that kind of thing. Um, because often assessment rating can be seen as just, oh, it's done, wait till next time, we'll think about it again. But okay. at the at the end of assessment rating, you've got to think you have got the regulatory authority providing you with a document that gives you suggestions on where you need to focus and think about some ideas for quality improvement planning and things like that, um, that it's kind of handed to you on a platter, but how you approach it is very different and services think about it and stuff like that. So I think, again, it's that thing that you can't just can't all happen all at once and we do work in environments where staff change and things happen and things yeah that it mm -hmm. changes how services deliver and stuff like that so but taking that approach to having short medium and long-term goals kind of thing that yet yeah, every service would love to be an excellent rated service mm -hmm. but the services that we find are excellent rating started to think about that five years ago yeah, that's and a good get point. to that Thank point you. because yeah. yeah, and let's like the national quality standard is a high standard and a high mm -hmm. expectation, and then exceeding is above and beyond that, and then excellent takes that to another whole different level. Mm -hmm. um, so it's yeah, and I think part of what makes you excellent is the journey that you got there, not what you're doing at the end kind of thing, but how you got there because yeah. you can't do it, and when yeah, you can't just go all right as of tomorrow we're an excellent rate we're going to deliver excellent rated care because that's not how it works yeah. it takes that process of collaboration and working and doing all that yeah. kind of stuff that doesn't come overnight and some of the stuff that we see in those excellent rated services take a lot of blood sweat and tears to get there it yeah. doesn't come yeah. easy it's hard work and it's it's also respect that you give to the process like mm. you say it's above and beyond uh, and it's a whole another level. So if you dignify what you're actually working towards, um, yeah, it, it does take all of that. So it's not that, oh, I've tried so much, but I still don't get exceeding. Um, that shows disrespect towards the rating exceeding, I guess, because um, maybe we are not hitting the spot yet because let's respect that first, except that, you know, that this is very this is a big deal. It's not an easy deal we are aiming for. And, and uh, perhaps that's when you can give yourself that grace of forgiveness that, okay, I'll try next time again. Mm. Um, yeah. um, I, uh, we, are learn we always learn a lot from you, Perry. And um, I have written a few things down for leaders and for services, which are 
of course, uh, every time I talk, uh, we, we've talked twice now and I feel more intelligent by the end of the session. I feel like, oh, well, I'm intelligent. I always call <laughs> these podcasts my own professional development. Yes. Like I'm always learning whenever we have yes, guests. Exactly, on. exactly. We, because when I, when I, I need to now have, like what I do is when I come for a podcast, I bring like a, a book and I write my points down there. Mm-hmm. They all are not the same books. They are any book which is in front of me. I think I need to write down, like listen to all my part, all the podcasts again and then take notes because that itself is a resource which people have now. Uh, and, and, and what a great opportunity. And again, Perry, I know it's a, it's a Friday. So um, uh, all the way from Sydney, Perry and, and, and Bobby are here uh, who are helping me out. And, and thanks for my dog for not barking, but he's <laughs> just whining. Uh, now he's like sitting next to me, he's fine. But unless I give that, attention to him for like 10 20 seconds he's paying he for it. That. yeah he's like oh yeah exactly and now he's like very calm and collected so well, I, again thank you for the opportunity to chat but it's one of those things where you just never know who's going to hear something in here yeah. that any one of us have said that's going to change how they think about that and we'll never know that kind of thing and you always get people go oh yeah I heard that podcast or like what you said and that kind of stuff and that kind of thing but it's those people that will listen and change how they think about things or change just one thing in their practice that you'll never hear about or never know Mm. um, but still know that you've kind of influenced and I think that's what makes yeah Yeah. makes that kind of change in thinking about how leadership works and that ability to be able to try and influence without Mm. being able to have to kind of see how you've influenced we are taking actions to for something we don't even know about. Like mm. the outcomes, we may not get to live those outcomes. We may not get to um, be in that gathering when they invite everyone for their for their accomplishments. Uh, they won't even know what impacted them, but with the intention of uh, trying to have a positive transformation in, in 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 at services, we started this podcast and and. I uh, really hope that we are doing that, Bavi. And uh, and thank you, Perry, uh, uh, for your input. Because um, one thing will, which stuck with me was about this seniority versus leadership. And the other one was that I wish that was mine, but I'd seen it on a YouTube <laughs> TED talk. I think somewhere along the line. So uh, I wish I could yeah. bring credit for that one. No, but yeah, no, that's it's, not mine. <laughs> it's 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 like we'll we'll go. Perry Campbell said that. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and we also look at. How um, who you are as a leader today has been influenced by conversations mm-hmm. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. And it just, uh, and that's what makes you a resource. Yeah. Um, your experiences is, is, is creating, is actually a, a, augmenting uh, something in your own self and your character is always developing. So thanks for bringing all those 30 years thing to yeah. us. So oh, look, and can, I think... For me, when I reflect on it kind of thing, you want to get to the end of your career and look back and go, actually, you know what, somebody else is halfway through their career looking back on something I said to them 20 years ago that changes who they are as a leader kind of thing. And I think if you can look back for whatever work you do and have those kind of thoughts and memories and that kind of stuff, then, yeah, you've done a great thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Perry. Perry from Masikwa. Uh, how do I say that? Um, let me go back to the, the page again. <laughs> Australian Children's Education and Care Quality Authority. So if you're on YouTube, you'll see that I'm not even looking at the screen. I go back to my laptop <laughs> to look at it because I have to read that. But I know it if I, if I meditate for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Perry. And uh, I love following you on Facebook. The jokes are really nice, uh, humorous. It gives me uh, you know, uh, if we can laugh at ourselves, and that that's great. And uh, Bobby, again, thanks for your commitment. I see that you are uh, again at the uh, office of yours. Uh, yeah, I had a toddler that didn't sleep much last night, so I'm a bit quieter than usual. Fun. Apologies. <laughs> and, oh man. And, and uh, that would mean that you didn't sleep either uh, that yeah, much. No. <laughs> uh, um, um, but I'm sure that Bobby, your your uh, experience and your uh, perception has always uh, helped. Um, people uh, I, I meant perspective not perception uh, again it's Friday and <laughs> I did sleep last night probably I'm not sure what's going on but <laughs> thank you thank you very much please support us um, you can support us through 
following the Facebook page on uh, what is that? Osh after the bell, uh, and we also have we will also have um, Instagram page. Um, um, Barbie's from Firefly HR, of course, you know what she does, but you can give her feedback and also ha- also contact her if you have any input in terms of HR. And of course, We Belong Education is proudly um, um, a partner of this, this phenomena. So thank you very much for continued support. Thank you again, Perry. Uh, oh, my and, pleasure. Thank and, you. And we would love to have you again. Uh, because uh, we get so good feedback that our mm. list because uh, this is the great platform. Well, maybe maybe one time if you're in Sydney and it all works out and we can all be in the same room and do it together. Yes, uh, uh, maybe take a Q and A from people and and then have like a, a panel of um, mm. um, and and take questions live uh, or do it in from one room. Barbie, I interrupted you. You were saying something. I have no idea. Sorry, it's the lack of sleep. No, I think getting Perry back on after it's been a segment of time, it's like what we say we do in services. We look at things again and with the different, yes. we've got different perspectives because time perspective yeah. change. So yes. even us not in a service, we're doing it. So yeah. And if we learn nothing from 2020, you can never tell where things are going to be in <laughs> six months' time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's tough times for many people uh, in, in our lives. And I hope that uh, conversations like this, uh, give you some relief um thank you for supporting us uh look after yourself and the people you love it's a goodbye from osh after the bell thank you